consensus with that uh, with us. So, are we ready? Yes, okay, so over to you. you. All right, thank you, Klaus. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm from CSP, as Klaus correctly said. I'm going to present to you the Wireless Campus Network that is a project developed from CSP. And uh, is a project basically uh, oriented to the realization of a, a wireless LAN network that uh, can be used both as uh, um, a test field for R&D purposes uh, and to spread the wireless LAN technologies among the local community. Well, uh, this project has many, cover many aspects, and so I will try to touch uh, uh, the principles once. Um, I will say something about uh, the general configuration of the network, then something about security, obviously user mobility, services, and also something about uh, how open source will, um, will be introduced in this project. Well, um, CSP has um, developed this project with Environment Park that is a technology park. I don't know if, as a, if a technology park is uh, known as an entity for you, but um, it's a place where uh, are hosted many um, enterprises and labs where they can provi are provided with a um, wet band connection to the Internet and so to ICT services. The main idea, as I told uh, uh, before, was uh, to have this uh, true purpose network and also to give a com dissemination and confidence uh, that we have uh, about wireless networks uh, and also with a uh, voice over IP and multimedia messaging. The key issues, obviously, uh, are uh, mostly um, focused on the, the use of state-of-the-art technologies. In fact, uh, we used the uh, um, vendor solution to start up our network, and then we are going to uh, add some uh, uh, new devices and open devices to both uh, test uh, more deeply the um, the feasibility of services and interoperability of systems and also to explore multiple service scenarios, I will say later. Technology is 11B compliant and our architecture uh, is comprised of access points and a central management server that uh, has uh, the function of uh, um, concentrate the traffic because before, uh, sorry, um, drawing it to the internet and to other internal networks. So we wanted to separate uh, the access network from the internal network. This for security purposes, but also because uh, um, we have uh, different types of services on this network. So we have users that uh, can use their internal network at Environment Park, and then we have users that are from abroad that are coming for, uh, I would say, visit uh, the internal uh, enterprises and so they have the chance to access the service uh, um, without uh, too many problems to configure that, uh, dev their devices and so there are many aspects to consider. We are in the first phase of deployment uh, and so we are uh, mm, providing the security servers and base services that are uh, web services uh, with uh, mail and so on. Later, we, we will prototype some new services. And the fact that uh, this uh, network is experimental gives us the possibility to uh, prototype services and immediately have the feedback from users. That's uh, just a view of the place uh, where we have uh, this installation. That's Environment Park. Well, this is the architecture and the network, as I said before. So you can see that uh, is separate from the internal networks, both uh, of CSP and environment parks. And then there are some other links uh, that are with uh, external hotspots uh, and a telco network. I will say later why there are some such links. 
um, that's uh, what I've said about the services. Advanced services, uh, we want to provide next, uh, um, covers many many items, for example, the video surveillance for wireless webcams. That is quite interesting, but uh, um, put some problems on our, on our attention. And then instant messaging, pre service pres presence services uh, that are connected to location-based services, and then uh, streaming uh, of uh, uh, video and uh, multimedia content on the network. The challenges obviously are uh, mm, different are on user mobility, security, uh, QS, and interoperability, also because we l open the network to different types of terminals that can be PDA or laptop or PC, so different operating systems. Uh, and um, I would say different uh, um, class of users. Just let me thank something about security. Well, security will be uh, approached at different uh, levels. Uh, well, there will be security, obviously, of, of the network, the internal network, uh, um, versus the new users. And so that's why we have divided uh, the wireless LAN from the internal network. And then the clients uh, will be able to access this network both uh, with the uh, web-based page that um, will, be able, uh, will be able to ask for a uh, username and password. And then uh, we will use also the HO2-1X to provide uh, um, stronger authentication for, it for internal users. Another issue is about the use of uh, mm, VPNs, it will be used for the user data security. So any users will be able to access its intranet uh, network. And uh, in the future, we are planning to connect this uh, first uh, site with many other sites that act like all spots. So um, a user that is uh, registered to our services could be able to access the service also when uh, it is uh, in another hotspot connected to the uh, to the hour. That's the scheme, uh, the basic scheme for the authentication. So we have used the Redis proxy system, so we can uh, connect uh, uh, any any users uh, with the uh, proper radio system, and so there are uh, divi are divided the databases with. Uh, the user's data. User's mobility obviously is uh, considered at a different level. User among uh, uh, can um, um, move the sums among APs on the same VLAN in a seamless way. We have uh, chosen this uh, first simple um, uh, solution because we had the to implement uh, first stage of services and it was simpler for us to uh, trial them on this uh, on this uh, network. In the future, we are planning to deploy mobile IP before, and uh, we have uh, testing lab activities on uh, mobile IPv6. Uh, we have also an internal IPv6 network, and so we are going to put together the two terms of the trial. From the service perspective, uh, we are very interested in location-based services. In fact, uh, we are working with the uh, Polytechnic of Turin to uh, deploy some uh, uh, test bed for uh, integration of uh, GPS information, so localization of the user, and uh, when they, the user is indoor, uh, uh, have the chance to uh, use uh, VLAN for localization and so to integrate uh, the two informations with the proper algorithms. Well, that's something about that. Well, another aspect of this trial is that uh, we are going to test uh, the VLAN and GPS together in the sense that uh, now we have a 
client cards that are provided with the SIM slot where you can find, we can uh, put uh, your SIM uh, um, with the GPRS uh, services from uh, any operator and then you can connect uh, uh, to the GPRS network or alternatively, alternatively to the VLAN. Now it's not possible to, uh, to choose uh, automatically which network is better for uh, our requirements. But in the future, we are going to connect to the operator, TECO operator network we, we have seen in the, first, uh, um, in the first image of the network. And then uh, through, through this connection, we will bring authentication for the users uh, and also to try to uh, keep services available also in roaming environment. This is the main uh, um, description of uh, how the network will be connected to the operator GPS network. As you can say, it, uh, it's based on uh, use of a radius proxy. So in any case, uh, the databases of users are separate. That's important in a in an organ in a network that uh, has to serve many administrative uh, um, parts. So something about services. We do like very much multimedia services, but uh, they they are they put uh, different challenges for us. For example, we have worked with VoIP uh, with uh, many systems. Uh, we have tried it also with satellite systems. And um, we find that without QS uh, it's fairly um, impossible to give uh, a high level of, uh, of the service, but we are studying, for example, the uh, adaptive coding of, uh, of uh, the streaming, so we can, uh, um, we can uh, keep under uh, our attention the throughput of the network so we can change the coding and the uh, proper um, parameters of the call during the call itself. Then uh, uh, there are instant messaging then, uh, that we consider as an important point for the services because uh, we would like uh, any user to be reachable any any place uh, he could be in the network and also when he is uh, in another hotspot connected to the uh, to the wireless campus so we would like uh, for him for example to receive a message on his PDA when he receives uh, an email messages or when he receives a call for example and uh, probably we would like also to uh, let him uh, play this message that is not in real time, so uh, cannot put uh, great problems for uh, for us. This uh, instant messaging could be provided, for example, connecting uh, our wireless campus to a SIP network. We are uh, deploying our internal SIP networks, and so uh, we think that uh, combining instant messaging and SIP capabilities, uh, we can improve the. Uh, the providing of these services of also with mobile uh, users. Then something about video multicasting, for example, uh, video coming from uh, um, the VB systems. Obviously, in this case, the problem is that uh, the, uh, the um, network is mostly at level two, and so the access point are not aware if uh, one of their u its user is connected with a Mustica session or not. So we found that uh, if uh, a user that is connected to Mustica then can change the access point, then the first access point continues uh, propagating the signal. So it's not uh, a good situation for uh, bandwidth. And um, it could be probably um, use uh, some uh, uh, alternative system uh, like uh, IGMP, snooping, but uh, um, there is a, an, a, it's an item that has to be um, more inspected. And then, as, as I said before, with the surveillance systems that requires, obviously, QoS. Finally, just a look to open source tools that uh, we are um, uh, already using and we're going to in, uh, integrate in our project. 
We consider them very important because uh, they let us uh, uh, test new features as soon as they are released uh, to draft and proposals. Uh, so have, uh, we don't have to uh, wait the time to market all of, true, of new project of new products, sorry. And then we can also put our hands in the code and then uh, modify operational model of these devices and adapt themselves to our requirements. Finally, is a personal, personal cha uh, challenge that of integration of open source world with commercial systems. We will we are going we are using an open access point. Uh, uh, that's a Linux uh, laptop, uh, in our case a PC with a PCI card, wireless card 11B, that works as uh, an AP. With this device, uh, we will be, uh, that is uh, provided with uh, drivers from uh, uh, open source OSTAPI project. We will be able to perform some activities, uh, for example, to work on uh, QS issues and uh, access to low levels uh, of the of the card interface, uh, for example, to test uh, location-based services and techniques. Then finally, we will integrate the free radius as an item in our radius chain, and finally, an uh, open uh, 802.1x client. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coletta. Are there any questions for Coletta? Again, a very clear presentation, uh, apparently. Um, then uh, it's customary that I ask a question. Um, one question that uh, came to mind was um, you are building this access based on 802.1x technology, but we are in a world where not everybody yet uses it. Um, how are you dealing with people coming in from those other networks? Yes, well, uh, the problem uh, was uh, clear to us because uh, uh, we didn't want to um, to have people that change their uh, configuration on install new uh, pages for, this, for their laptops, for example, or the problem is uh, much worse with their PDA. And so we will have some areas that are dedicated to open access of people, uh, for example, conference areas. Uh, where they will, will have uh, some, uh, I would say, temporary accounts uh, that with a username and password uh, provided by web. And so they, they will be able to reach uh, some particular sites, for example, for security purposes and not the internal network. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone, a question? Jürgen. Uh, just one question about uh, your interoperability tests between um, wireless LAN and uh, GPRS. Um, as GPRS is much more slower, I um, would like to, to get some more information about the kind of applications you are running in this environment. Well, I suppose that uh, instant messaging will be the more uh, feasible uh, from uh, our uh, pr prospective services. And then we are going to test this uh, connection also with a uh, system of authentication by SIM. And so this will be the most important uh, service. I, I have a little follow-up question on that. Um, you also uh, mentioned adaptive coding. Um, in uh, some GPRS trials we did, we found that that really didn't work because the the latency was so high that by the time you detect that something goes wrong and you try to do something about it, the network will be completely stuffed with uh, data that gets retransmitted, etc., etc. And by the time you have scaled down a video stream, for instance, the other side is already capable of getting it again. Um, what are your experience with that? Well, we have uh, done many mm, tests, but uh, um, tests with GPRS are 
are going to be performed. We are we are deploying them, and so I cannot respond now to this uh, question with uh, such uh, uh, particulars. But uh, um, we are doing these tests, uh, so I suppose that uh, soon we will be able to to give a response to this. Okay. Thank you once again. Thank you. Um, as we uh, have uh, a little bit of time left, I guess uh, my initial warning, the speakers, don't, I will cut you off if you go over time, really helped uh, a bit too good. Um, so I guess we have time for a couple more questions that arose during the first presentations. Uh, Jürgen, you had, for instance, one more burning question. Well, it's uh, just uh, of, of interest. Um, Maybe to Nick, um, um, the, uh, the numbers of users uh, you, you can see uh, daily was, was not so high. So I guess from that, um, users are using um, the wireless networks just for maybe some, some personal work like uh, email stuff, uh, something like this. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to integrate uh, the wireless technology also in the process of, of learning and teaching a bit more? Because then I guess the user rates you will see will rise? Yes, it, it varies massively at the moment. There are some users who would use it almost every day. We have, uh, in particular the remote service, we now have one member of the staff working in the Orkney Islands in the north of Scotland who uses it every day and is completely dependent on the service for their, for their university work. We have other users who might use it just once every few months for a particular presentation they're giving. Uh, most users might use it once or twice a week, as you said, for personal use like email. But we're very, we're very much hoping that we are ahead of the requirements that lecturers will have and our learning technology people will have to use it as part of their teaching. And that's part of the deployment. Um, so we will be ready when they are ready for it. Okay. Any other questions for any of the four presenters for today? Then I would like to conclude this session with once more reminding you of being at time at the gala. I was specifically told to repeat that a couple of times uh, due to the fact that at the previous time uh, a lot of people complained uh, of being shut out. So be there. Once more, be there. Um, <laughs> And I would uh, like to thank you all for attending and uh, addressing your questions to the presenters. Uh, if some more questions come up, uh, you know how to find them at the gala. You now know how they look like, so corner them and fire all your questions. And once more, I would like to point you to the mobility session tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Um, thanks again. <laughs>